Hey everyone, it's Average Joe PC, and today we're going to go through Xenia setup for Xbox 360 emulation. Now there are a couple different ways to go about this, but today we're going to set it up to, and create individual game shortcuts that can be put on your desktop, added to Steam, and even have the whole thing transferable to another PC with just drag and drop. So I'm going to start with creating a folder on, in my documents named Xbox 360. Now you can put this anywhere on your PC you like, but if you want it to be easily copy pasted to another PC, I recommend putting it somewhere on the root of the C drive, because every PC has one. But for now I'm just going to put mine in my documents folder. So now that I've got my 360 folder created, I'm going to go inside and create another folder and name it template. And inside of that I'm going to put two more folders, one named game and one named extras. And these will come into play later on. Now it's time to download our emulator and patches from GitHub, and I'll leave links in the description box for these. We're going to be using Xenia Canary so we can utilize available patches. So now that they're downloaded, we're going to extract them both into the template folder we just created. Now before we dive into Xenia, we're going to make sure that this is portable. So in the template folder where we have our emulator, we're going to right click New, and then click on text document and we're going to change the name of that to portable.txt. Okay now double click the Xenia executable and Xenia will open. We can close it now because all we needed was for it to create its running files. Now here's where it gets scary for a lot of people. The config file. And if you've never looked at one or changed settings at one it can be daunting but fear not. Just think of it as a babysitter for the program with a written list from the parents on what the program is allowed to do while being babysat. Now we're setting this up as our base configuration, but you may have to change some settings from game to game, which is where this type of setup comes in handy. Now I'm going to set my APU max queued frames at 3 because I've had issues with the audio syncing up with the video. And under display, I'm going to set full screen to true because when I double click that shortcut, I want to be ready to go. And under GPU, I'm setting draw resolution scale X and Y to 2, because I want a little bit better than native, but I don't want to push my system too hard. And under general, I'm going to change apply patches to true, so I can use patches and help iron out some of the bugs in these games. And under UI, I'm going to change show achievement notification to true, because who doesn't enjoy seeing that little achievement notification pop up? So now that we have our generic Xenia settings ready, we're going to start getting game specific. Now back out into the Xbox 360 folder and the only thing in it should be the template folder. Now copy and paste that folder and give it the name of our first game to set up. Now navigate to your game file, copy it, and go back to your new game folder with the same name and paste it in the game folder. Before we back out we're going to want to right click and copy as path in Windows 11 or hold shift then right click for it to come up in Windows 10. Then we can back up one level to the main game folder. Now we're going to right click on the Xenia.exe and create a shortcut. Once we've done that we'll right click and rename it to the game we're working on. Now that it's renamed we'll right click and go to properties. Once that window is open the target for the shortcut should be highlighted. Tap the right arrow on your keyboard and the place to type should be all the way to the right. Hit the spacebar and then Control v to paste the game path in here. This is also where you can change the shortcuts icon. Whenever I do a custom icon for something like this, I like to keep it close, so I'm going to put that icon in the extras folder we made earlier. That way, if we decide to copy this to another system, they'll travel together. By the way, if you want to create custom icons, I'll leave a link in the description box for that walkthrough. Now click Apply and OK, and now that shortcut will open up that specific game. So rinse and repeat for as many as you want to set up. Don't forget we have a patches folder, so head in there and search for the game you're playing and if there's a patch file, open it up and change the patches you want to use to true. Some are for graphics fixes and some are for cheats, it just depends on the game you're patching. Now keep in mind your generic settings may not work for every game, so you may have to play around with the config file for each game. 
or take to the internet to find someone that already has. But at least with this setup, once you have the file set for the game, it's good to go. You don't have to worry about changing it every time you change games. For installing DLC, if you're using the Canary build like we are, all you have to do is start up the game, stop it, then navigate to the content folder for that game and transfer the 002 folder that we backed up from R360 into the game ID folder. This is where still having the game ID to reference comes in handy. And there you go. Xenia Canary will be able to access the DLC for that game. Now keep in mind, not all DLC is compatible with Xenia, so your mileage may vary. At this point, when you have all your games finished, you can take your whole Xbox 360 folder, copy it to a thumb drive, and drop it on any other PC, and everything we've done here should work. Just keep in mind, the folder should be on the root of the C drive on the new PC for the shortcuts to work. You can set this up in a standard place like the My Documents folder on your C drive. As long as the username is the same on the other PC, it should work. At this point, we have a few options. We can leave everything where it is, and we'll have to navigate through folders to get to each of our games, but that's no fun. We can also drag all of our shortcuts to the desktop, or a master game shortcut folder, depending on your preference. But I like the Steam interface, and I've set up my PC to boot directly into Steam, bypassing Windows Desktop entirely, and if you'd like to do the same, I'll leave a link in the description box for that walkthrough. Otherwise, have fun gaming! If this video was helpful, give it a like and hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. If there's a video you'd like to see, leave a request in the comments and I'll do my best to get to it. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch link in the description box.